Hello, 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 you guys. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Save Not Soft. Woo! Episode two of season two. Woo! I hope you guys are having a great week so far. I hope your past two weeks were amazing and full of fun and joy. Uh, today is a great day. I mean, I'm not filming this on Tuesday. This is a pre-recorded episode, I'm just, but I'm just going to act like for the sake of the video and for the sake of the podcast that, t- that today is the day, but I am in a very joyous mood and I'm so excited when September 5th rolls around because that is when I hit my anniversary of being sober. Yay! So many claps. God has been so graciously good to me, and uh, I would like to say that that was kind of like the, like the pivotal, one of the pivotal things I had to sacrifice for me to get on this walk that I'm now with, with Jesus, that I'm now on with Jesus. There we go. And um, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to talk about some things and to celebrate with you guys, Um, because to me, this is like a huge deal. Like being sober um, and staying sober for this long has been so amazing and rewarding. And it's so weird because it's like, I don't even remember my old life and uh, how I used to operate because I've been out of it for so long and I never want to touch it again. Uh, But yeah, y'all, I'm just so excited to talk to you guys today uh, to share the goodness of God. And um, I thought it would be an appropriate manner to talk about addictions um, and how you could break your addictions through Christ. Um, and today would be the best day to do it because it's on my two year soberversary. So I thought this would be a good little conversation to bring up. It's also something I'm very passionate about talking about. Uh, and yeah, I'm really excited to get into it. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, if you don't, if you have no idea who I am, this is your first time. Hello. My name is Emmy Moore and I'm the host of Save Not Soft. And this is called Save Not Soft because this is not for the weak. This is not for the softies. This is for the people who are devoted to Christ and are ready to go to war, like ready. Well, Jesus already won the battle, but it's a war between our flesh and our spirit. And it's all just about navigating your life with Christ. And sometimes it could be hard. Like this isn't an easy journey. You literally have to turn away against everything that you've learned your whole life and conform to a new pattern. But that's through the grace of Christ. I'm so excited to talk about him today and um, just sharing my testimony um, a little further. And yeah, let's just get into it. I first want to open up in prayer. Y'all know me because I love when we pray together. Uh, So if you guys can please bow your heads with me, that would be amazing. Father God, we just come to you today and we just thank you for this platform. God, I thank you for this platform. I do not take this for granted, God. I pray that you use me for your good, not for my will or my good, but for your good, God. I pray that you use my my voice to reach the hearts um, of your children, that the words that I say are edifying, that they are encouraging, that they are powerful, that they are full of wisdom, love, and gentleness, and that the hearts of those who are listening are open, and that uh, they're just ready to receive what you have, God. God, um, give me the wisdom to speak. Um, give me the confidence to speak, sharpen my tongue, make my thoughts pure. And this is just a platform for God to be God and for you to be you. And uh, we just exalt you with the highest praises and we just love you so so much and we're just trusting that you're going to do such a good thing and you are going to make a work father god i pray that in this episode chains are broken i pray that people will receive that your people will receive a revelation um to break addictions that they know that they have or maybe some that they didn't know that they have father god i just pray that this message um is a weapon not to hurt anybody but rather to just just slay down the the sin that was casted against them. I pray that uh, chains are torn off, that that the battle is just one God, and uh, we're holding on to you as our peace, and we're holding on to you as our rock, and we're holding on to you as our protector, and our father, and our lover, our best friend, and our everything. We love you, and we're so excited to hear what you have to say, and uh, how you're going to change our hearts and our minds today, God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Also, I don't know what it is. My eyes is like mass sensitive because this ring light, y'all. I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, ugh. It's fine. 
we'll live through it. Um, so yeah, I first want to talk about my testimony and, uh, my testimony with addictions and what I was necessarily sober from. Don't think I was cracking down on some like meth pipe or like starting some, some coca through like the dollar bill. I wasn't doing anything like that, but I mean, addictions are addictions and idolatry is idolatry. So it's just kind of like, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's just that, you know, I did face addiction at one point. So, uh, I definitely felt led to share my testimony. Um, so yeah, I want to say this all started back when I was 15 years old. I was in high school and this is when like vape pens first came out and somebody lied to me and said that it, it it's water vapor. It was, it's not water vapor y'all. It's nicotine. And, um, you know, of course, growing up, I saw cigarettes and was like, oh, if you smoke cigarettes, you're a weirdo. Like, you just straight up weird. But then these vapes came around. People was doing, like, tricks with them. And it it was flavored. And it smelled gross. And I was just kind of like, hmm, okay. Like, I wasn't super intrigued off it off the bat because it was, like, those big old battery boxes. Um, but I remember I had some friends that I played sports with, like, do it in my friend's vapes and they had like a little a little vape pen and one day I tried it everyone around me loved it so I was like shoot me too why not and that was the start to my vaping journey um absolutely terrible I remember uh the first time and and this is just smoking in general so basically I I just used to smoke like crazy. Um so from that me vaping um I then started to um smoke smoke the marijuana. I started to smoke uh, marijuana uh well I tried it for the first time when I was 16 did not like it started tripping out. Um I actually got high on accident. I will not be telling that story <laughs> here because it's not very appropriate. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I did get high on accident uh, because basically I thought that the pen was a vape, a vape pen. So I just kept hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, um, thinking that it was a vape pen, but it was weed. It was like a wax pen. Uh, and I was like, oh, uh uh-uh, uh, got extremely um high. It was really scary. I hated it every single moment of it. Um, and this was all just in my high school year. So it all just kind of started out pretty innocent. Um, just like my friends was doing it, everyone was smoking. It was just kind of like, okay. And keep in mind, this is something we would do at school. Like it wasn't something that I was getting into outside of school because I wasn't really leaving my crib. This was kind of more on like lunch break or in the bathrooms because it's like you can't smell vapes it's just like you take it in and it and it go out like air and um I remember I got my first piece shortly after um and I remember not really liking vaping at first but wanting to do it because it looked cool and that sounds so disgusting and gross and this is 15 year old me by the way so this is seven years ago and um and deep down inside me I already knew like oh, this probably isn't a good idea, but let me just do it anyways, idiot. And um, little did I know that that was going to start a four-year addiction, almost three uh, or almost five-year addiction um, that turned into an immense amount of health problems, spiritual warfare, and uh, a lot of spiritual uh, issues and problems. And uh, I remember... As as I was throughout high school, I didn't really smoke weed a lot throughout high school. I mostly vaped, and that's kind of the thing I'm going to be touching on a lot. But um, I remember kind of realizing how addicted I was in high school to vape because I would go into, like, the bathrooms and be chief in this thing. Like, e- there was even times where we would, like, hit it in class um, because that's how addicted I was and these are things that you could just kind of like bring around you could hide it put in the, the sleeve of your sweater and just kind of and if you hold it in long enough when you breathe out like smoke won't come out so it was just like I was so addicted to smoking and it just rewarded my brain so nicely and uh 
to you guys who are on here and have followed me for a while know somewhat of my testimony, I went through a lot of depression and anxiety, and I thought that vaping was fixating all of that. Whenever I was, whenever I was highly anxious, I would hit my vape. Whenever something happened, oh, I need to hit my vape. Oh my gosh, this got me mad. I need to hit my vape. Oh, this makes me feel some sort of way. I need to hit my vape. And everyone who knows me in school and high school knew, knew that I was always that thing, like couldn't get a break from it. And it's because I was what constantly anxious and constantly depressed. And for the last bit of high school, constantly suicidal. So that they gave me a temporary fixation to a way deeper spiritual issue. And um, I didn't realize how addicted I was until probably my last year of high school. And I was like, dang, I'm smoking a lot. (laughs) I'm smoking a lot. And I go back to my vape a lot. Like I'm hitting it every other second. I can't even go an hour without it. It's that scary, y'all, to where I would wake up. It, I would wake up, we would call it head change, when you hit it for the first time and you get head change, which means like your your brain gets fuzzy and it like gives you like this like zzz feeling. When the nicotine like hits your brain, it gives like this very pleasurable feeling that just like zzz, just makes you feel like whoop. And uh, I remember like receiving that head change as soon as I woke up, like waking up and the first thing I did before I even went on my phone was hit my vape. And, uh, that continued after high school, after high school, I kept vaping, I kept smoking, uh, after high school, I ended up moving to LA for a few months and that's when I really got into weed and I was smoking weed. I kid you not every single dang day. Uh, and I mean, in LA, especially because I was worldly when I was living there, you know, they was giving out weed like it was, like it was candy on Halloween. So it was just kind of like, okay, but let me take it, you know? And I was just smoking so much, so much, so much, so much. And I would like to say, uh, 2020 to 2021, uh, was the worst year when it came to my health. And, uh, when it got to like late 2020, I started experiencing little like seizure like things like seizure like things in my sleep like mini epilepsy I would like to say um I don't know necessarily what it's called but I would go to sleep and I would wake up in the middle of the night shaking profusely and um couldn't stop myself and it's because I wasn't eating all day because I was smoking I wasn't drinking water. I wasn't eating. I was just smoking. And even if I did eat and drink a lot of water, I was smoking every single second that uh, you could find. And I was having like mini seizures in my sleep. And um, from that, I was not getting a lot of sleep. I was barely eating. I was highly depressed. Um, And and I knew Jesus around this time. I I already found Jesus. And um, I... Was I... No, I was still, I do believe I was still smoking. I'm I'm trying to think, when was that? That's right, I was smoking around that time. So, this is about like a year and a half after me encountering Jesus, I was still smoking. And I knew God, I I think I was actually smoking, yep, I was, even when I was baptized, and after I was baptized, I was still smoking and I was still facing addiction. And I knew that this is something that wasn't glorifying God. And I didn't know how to get rid of it. I had the desire to. I tried. It was hard. It wasn't working. I got the dang patches. I've gone cold turkey. I've done it. I've kind of gone, try to go off it um, by like periods and stuff. And I've tried to quit smoking so many times and it just wasn't working. So I just kept doing it. My health was absolute boo-boo and um, I just kept getting sick. Uh, I'm about five, right now I'm 5'9 and I'm 140. Uh, I was 5'9 still in about 113. 113, 115. I was, going, I was bouncing between those two. And I'm pretty skinny right now, y'all. I'm skinny right now. So imagine me... 25 pounds less than what I am right now. I was sticks and bones 
And uh, I just I just didn't look healthy. I wasn't eating. I wasn't drinking. And uh, I was receiving a lot of health issues. And uh, I remember I had this deep desire to quit. And I was trying. It wasn't working. And how I ended up getting pulled out of that that addiction was actually deliverance that I received. So I used to I used to clean for the salon like like two years ago, and I would just clean up the salon. It'd be like late at night and just like listen to music, whatever. And on September fifth, two years ago, I had my vape in my pocket, and I was just like, God. I'm so ready to let this go. And I remember waking up even that morning knowing that something was going to be different. I remember waking up that morning being like, something's going to be so life-changing today. I knew that the Lord was going to put me in a new season. And I just woke up just kind of already knowing that the Lord was going to just deliver me to a new season. I was like, okay, what's going on? And I remember I was cleaning up the salon and I was like, God, I'm just ready to let go. I'm just ready to be done with this, right? And I go back to the back of the the studio, the salon, and there's this big old dumpster. And I pulled out my vape. I took one last hit. I'm not gonna cap. <laughs> and then it was it was literally the Holy Spirit that talked to through me because I didn't even think to say anything like this, but I literally lifted it and I said, I rebuke every trauma bond and attachment and spiritual attachment. I've made with this vape, I rebuke it and renounce it in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to throw this away in order to regain peace. And I threw it in the trash can. And then I started throwing up. (laughs) As soon as it hit the trash can, I started to throw up and I started to like shake. I was so confused. And I was just kind of like, okay, don't know what that was. Let me go back and clean the salon, right? And immediately I just felt lighter. And I knew I like threw up and I like shaked a little because I felt something completely spiritual like rip out out of me. Like a tie, this bond that I have just completely. I went back and I cleaned this dang salon. Like nothing happened. And I remember thinking, like these withdrawals are going to suck because like I said, I tried quitting before and I would get crazy headaches. I would have an, I would have an inability to sleep. I would not have any appetite at all. And, um, I was just not looking forward to the withdrawals, but fast forward, I had no withdrawals, not a single one, not a single bad headache. I was sleeping perfectly fine. And it was because Jesus completely delivered me from my addiction. And out of all the research that I've done with facing addiction and how to move on from things, um, I never, I never heard of Jesus taking it for me and me walking fully in that grace. And the reason why I share my testimony is because and why, and why this is so spiritual is because addictions isn't just physical. It is such a spiritual manner. And I think sometimes we could write off addictions as just like, oh, well, our flesh is addicted and like our brain just likes pleasurable things and it releases dopamine when we receive these things. But we have such a legitimate need and we meet it illegitimately. And maybe you've never smoked. Because the whole point of this podcast episode is not to reach people who smoked before. This is to reach people who have an addiction, period. Because the whole reason as to why I was smoking in the first place was because I had a deep spiritual need and I replaced peace with worldly things. And it doesn't matter if you never smoked or if you never drank, um, if you haven't been addicted to those things. Naturally, as human beings, we are addicted to certain activities or behaviors or people or things that may not be substances or drug abuse. It, it could be something completely different. And um, me going through this experience, I realized that, dang, I was really, really addicted. And more importantly, I was putting my vape before God. And the most beautiful thing about it is because I gave it to him, I was able to walk freely in chains. And I kind of want to more more so talk about uh, things I had to walk through with God to get fully delivered from my addictions um, and how 
to just walk freely in the gift of grace. And I'm just so excited to share that with you guys today. Um, let me bring up my notes. Hello. I was like, uh, I, I think the, the biggest thing I told myself when I was facing my addiction was it was a, I had to say it until I believe it, that God is bigger than my addiction, that God is way bigger than what I'm facing right now. And I want to address some things that I had to ask myself while I was facing an addiction. And if you guys are facing addiction as well, these are some questions you could ask yourself. Um, my thing was, you know, Emmy, am I really addicted? And if you have the inability to stop something, you're addicted to it. So I wasn't, I wasn't addicted to weed because I, I stopped that very quick. I actually stopped smoking weed before, um, I smoked nicotine. I, I qu- quit nicotine. I'm sorry. Um, I stopped smoking weed before I stopped smoking nicotine because I quite honestly didn't like the feeling that, that we gave me. Um, if anything, it made my body less anxious when it came to like jitteriness, um, and just pain. Uh, but I didn't like the intrusive thoughts and how my brain and my thoughts were really loud. I didn't like that. And, um, in some senses, it made me more anxious emotionally and spiritually, but physically, no. Um, so weed, I cut off easily and I didn't miss it at all. But with nicotine, that was a battle, y'all, for years, me trying to fight, uh, breaking off this chain with with nicotine. And I knew I was addicted to it because I had the inability to stop. I I was having such a hard time not smoking. Like I woke up and the first thing I did was smoke. As soon as I woke up, like, good morning. Like, let's be very for real. And it just wasn't, it just wasn't something that I could stop during the time. And the whole reason as to why we have addictions in in the first place is because we try to replace God's goodness with something worldly. We try to replace God's grace and his peace with something that will never sustain us. And these are called suppressants. So we have very legitimate needs, but we go about them illegitimately. And our flesh rewards us with our addictions with dopamine. So for an example, every time I would smoke my little vape pen, my flesh was rewarding itself with the dopamine that it was releasing. And this is what you face, even if it's not smoking, whether if it's even like having sex, like even if you're addicted to having sex or hanging out with a certain person or doing a certain activity, like your brain your flesh automatically releases dopamine so it can reward your flesh back for the thing that it's doing. It's pleasurable, right? And we as human beings love pleasure. And I was being pleasured, but only temporarily. I wasn't truly being satisfied by the free gift of grace that God was giving me. If anything, I was just indulging and Lush Ice by Puff Bar. <laughs> and um, it was it, it, it tasted like Red Bull and it was my vape monster. I forgot the name of it. But that is what I put before the cross. And I was, I was letting my flesh reward itself instead of letting God reward me with this all sustaining grace and mercy. And whether if your addiction is sleeping with a certain someone, or sparking up something, or doing a certain activity, your brain releases a reward so your flesh can receive pleasure. Mm -mm. And this is a pattern. It's a cycle. This is no, this is like no secret. Addictions is a pattern. It's a cycle. It's like a, it's like a dog chasing its tail. Just runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. And it's a cycle. It's a pattern. You're going to keep going. But the thing is, is that you're wearing down the dog. Like the dog is going to get tired. Like the the dog, it's just running around in circles. Like what are you doing? You could just be running straight, but yet you're in a cycle. You're in a pattern. And addictions is a stumbling block from us walking straight. So God has this desire for us to walk down this path with him. And I was just sitting here like this. And he was like, Emmy, I want you to go straight. And I was like, no, let me just stay right here with my addiction. Let me stay right here with me smoking, with me entertaining people that I shouldn't be entertaining. Let me just chase my tail real quick. 
But God is desiring me to stop, snap out of my dizziness, and walk forward in the free grace and mercy that he has given me. And I can only do that through him. And uh, I think a, a, a hard thing I was facing with my addiction was the fact that I had to change. And there's a lot of reasons as to why change is really hard, but change is still achievable through Christ. And I was having a hard time changing because one, I had too much accessibility to it. So with addiction, sometimes we can't change the way that we think or the way that we move is because maybe sometimes we may have too much accessibility to it. It may be in our hands too much. It may be in front of our face way too much. And that could even be be in the sense of being around the wrong people. Like I was around people who would smoke all the time. Oh, you want to hit this? You want to try this? And that wasn't increasing the destiny that the Lord had for me. If anything, it was just encouraging my sinful lifestyle that I was living in. And there's environments that can tempt you and easy accessibility can tempt you. But more importantly, the reason why we refuse to change is because we are so prideful and stubborn that when we have a very spiritual need, we will try to replace peace with worldly things. We will try to replace the sust- the sustainability of God with things that will never fully sustain us. Like, I, I think people are like, oh, I don't want to change. Or I think people, let me rephrase. I think people say that they do want to change because here's the thing. When I was addicted, I would love to, I would love to say like, oh, I don't want to be smoking this anymore. I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to be a dick, da, 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 da. But you know, when things hit the fan, the first thing I was doing was <sighs> people say they don't want to change, but when push comes to shove, you know, people will choose their own way over God's. So I'd sit here and complain, oh, I don't want to smoke. I don't want to do this. Oh no, this guy made me mad. <sighs> What's the first thing I turned to? I went to my stupid vape pen instead of scripture. And I indulged in that because I was so stubborn and prideful and thought that my own ways could help me when they were not. They were making me sick. They were making me have little mini seizures in my sleep and me staying at an unhealthy weight. And I wasn't eating properly. I wasn't drinking properly. My bones were weak. And it's because I was doing what I wanted to do. And I was not doing what God wanted me to do. And us having addictions is a response for us having a legitimate need, but going about it illegitimately. And I feel like I talk about this in every episode because I would like to say that the source, like pretty much the issue to a lot of our problems is us, sin, right? And it's prideful. So... When we have a need that needs to be met and go about it in a prideful manner, like this is something like in every podcast, if you listen to me, we just go about things the wrong way. And why do we do that? Because we follow our own needs and wants an itinerary before God's. And it's a heart issue that we have. It's a pride issue that we have. And we're supposed to deny this part of ourselves and pursue the Lord. And the culprit is pride. The culprit to addictions is pride. And it's really sad because Pride can make itself look victimizing and sad and, oh, well, you just, you're addicted to this because this happened to you. Or you're just doing this this way because this happened and it was a really sad, tragic situation. But pride in all aspects is just evil. It's so evil. And pride can at times masks itself to look like something else, like a victim. When it's actually just stripping your soul from everything good that God wants to give you. Um, James 1, 13 through 15, I brought this up in a, in a recent podcast. I think it was uh, the addiction of hiding is what I talked about. But it says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. I remember where I said this. I said this in the Crucify Your Fantasies um, episode. 
Yeah. It starts with our own desires. Our addictions are not things that the Lord gives us. It's things that we turn to to try to replace God's sustainability and goodness. And literally, what does scripture say? He does not tempt anyone, but each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own desire. So you're telling me I am dragged away from from the presence of God, from God by my own desire, because of my stubbornness, because of how prideful our flesh is, right? And then we're enticed. Then after each desire has been conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. So in my case, I was dragged away. Okay, let's start from the top. So in my case, God did not tempt me. I was dragged away by my own sinful and evil desire, which was my addiction to smoking. And because of that, that led me to sin. And that sin was me taking my vape and putting it before the cross, was idolizing my my addiction. So me smoking led me to ultimately being in a posture of idolatry. And because of that sin, it results to death. This is the complete opposite of what God calls us to do. And I was just tired of the substitutes. And uh, I I knew whenever I quit nicotine that it was just like, yo, I'm done. I cannot let this keep producing little sinful babies. Because it literally says in, in James, like when it's conceived, it gives birth to sin. I was having little sin babies every time I was sparking it up. And hit a little puff, puff, one, two, two. I was producing a a sinful baby of idolatry because I would hit my vape before I would even go pray. And like I said, whatever addiction you may have, whether if it's whether if it's smoking or whatever, like this applies because addictions is something that we put before the cross. And your addictions don't honor God whatsoever. Romans 8, 7 through 8, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law or nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. When we indulge in our addictions, our mind is hostile to God, meaning that it's in opposition of what God wants, of God's will. And when we are indulging in the things that our flesh wants and when our mind is being governed by our flesh, the thing that has to die and won't go up to heaven, it's going against every single little good thing that God has for you. And it says that we can't even submit to God's law when we are governed by the flesh. And when you're indulging in your addictions, you are allowing your flesh to dictate your mind. And this cannot be great news though. God is so much bigger than your addictions. And Jesus did not die on the cross for nothing. Jesus died on the cross for your suffering, for your hurt, for your pain, for your legitimate needs, whether they're spiritual, emotional, physical. Jesus died for your addiction so you could walk freely in him. You just got to lay it down. And I think what really pushed me to drop my addictions was I had this was suddenly I had an awareness that God lived within me and I wanted to give him a good home because when the Holy Spirit was given to us after Jesus died and resurrected, the Holy Spirit was given to God's people. So now you no longer have to go to tabernacles or synagogues to feel the presence of God. He now dwells with, excuse me, Albert, he now dwells within you. So now that I know that I'm a mobile walking temple, I had this awareness that God dwells within me and I'm not giving him a good home if I'm smoking it up. I'm not giving God a good temple if I'm not honoring my body, the place like the place that he dwells. I'm now a mobile temple of where the spirit of the Lord resides. And I had this hyper awareness of like, oh, God lives here and I'm smoking and ruining my body, not eating bones weak 
What's that? Um, mom's spaghetti. Why can't I think of the words right now? But my question to you is, do you want God to live in a nice home? Because he dwells within you if you accept him as Christ Lord Jesus. Do you want him to have a nice home within his people? If the answer is yes, then why do we keep indulging in things that will never sustain us and things that are hurting our bodies? Your temple is important. Your body is so important. Take care of it. You're worth taking care. You're worth being taken care of. So after I uh, beat my addiction, I had I kind of went on like a health like rampage. I started going to the gym. I've been going to the gym consecutively for two years, every single day. Meal prepping, eating healthy, drinking my water, getting my vitamins, getting it right. And I feel absolutely amazing. I feel great. And I did not feel great two years ago when I was smoking every single day of my dang life. And I was taking gears off my life. And I can't believe I missed this in my testimony. And I'm going to go back. God just reminded me right now. The reason why I went back and I got delivered from smoking was because I remember God told me, and I can't believe I left this out because this is the most important part. He verbally told me, he said, Emmy, if you don't kill this thing, it's going to kill you. I said, oh, it's like every vision that God gave me, I started to slowly see it fade away. He's like, if you keep smoking, you're going to die. And I was like, Oh, no, I don't want that to happen. And it's because God just wanted me to live so freely in him. And all I had to do is just say no to my pride and not let my flesh win under any circumstance. In the moment and out of the moment, in all aspects. I put in in that like it was so sad Like after I broke off my addiction, what made me really sad is that I realized how much I was putting my addiction before God and before the cross because addiction is a form of idolatry. It's prideful. Like the whole reason as to why the Israelites constructed the golden calf in the first place was because they couldn't wait on God. We make addictions in replacement of God's goodness because we can't wait on him. We don't know how to wait on him. We don't like to wait on him. So instead of letting letting God be God, we let us be us. And what does that always result to? Chains. Good thing Jesus is a chain breaker. That's why he never wore jewelry because he's going to break the chains. <laughs> that was so dumb and corny. But... With Christ, there is freedom. And we know that when we make addictions, like there has to be a repetitive part on our end to take accountability because we put our addictions before the cross. We put our addictions before God. We will go to our addictions before we go to Christ. And this could be so simple with just like going on your phone or even like with your friends, like just idolizing in general. Like who do you put before God? I was putting my vape before God. And we construct these golden calves that may look like substances, people, activities, drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it may be. When in all actuality, those things are robbing us of the glory that we should be giving to God. And we will bow down, down, whoa, 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 what came out of my mouth? And we will bow down to things because we're impatient and prideful. What did I, I almost went into a song, down, 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 you down, 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 down. I think what's either, um, I think what's even more sick about addictions and idolatry just in general is that we think that our idols will, will glorify God. 
Like, the Israelites really thought that when they constructed that golden calf, that it was giving glory to God. They were pretty much just saying, okay, God, I know you're up there doing your thing with Moses, and because I don't want to wait on you, I'm actually going to make this thing, worship it, pray that it gives you all the glory, and have orgies, and, you know, strip my clothes, and do uh, whatever the heck with it. Think of that it's going to glorify you. When God just asked the Israelites to wait on him, and yet they made a golden calf thinking that it was going to glorify him. It did not. And we do the same thing with our idols and with our addictions. We will make things and think that they glorify God or our walk. One thing that comes onto the top of my mind, and I know a lot of people are going to get at me for saying this, but I've heard so many people tell me, worldly people, be like, oh, well, when I smoke weed, I just hear God better. Let's be very for real. Let's be very for real. I've talked to a few friends and people in general who enjoy smoking. And they always tell me, well, when I just smoke weed, I hear God better. If that was the case, then why did Jesus die? (laughs) If, If that was really the case that you could hear God better when you smoke then why did Jesus die on the cross for us and come back three days later? Because basically what you're saying when you say, I could hear God better when I'm high, is you're pretty much just saying the cross wasn't enough for me. That I still need weed as an intercessor. When Christ died, he died so now he could dwell within you and you have direct communication with with him now because he broke the seal between him and And sin, he broke that blockage and he united us back together. So when you're saying, oh yeah, like I can hear God better when I smoke weed. You're basically saying that the cross wasn't enough, that, that your wax pen or that the blunt needs to be used as an intercessor for you to hear God. But don't you know, you could already have direct communication with the Lord. And what's even more funny is that marijuana is like most like, psychotic compound is THC. And basically what it does, it alters your brain function. And at times it could make your, your neurological system just go in like random places. So they're like, Oh, I can't hear God better. I could hear him louder. Are you hearing God? Or are you just hearing yourself in a different format, but louder? Is that God talking to you? Or is it a different version of you talking to you? You don't need to smoke weed to hear God. You just need to be in his presence. And God calls us to be sober-minded. And I would very, very much so like, like to encourage you guys to repent. Because when we're saying we need these things to please God and to communicate with God, like I used to think like this. I used to be one of those people that was like, oh, like I could just hear God better. I wasn't hearing God. I was hearing myself. And how dare I think that that was better than what Jesus did for me? I would encourage y'all to repent. To say, God, I'm sorry I put the cross before you. Or I put my addictions before you. And I wasn't putting the cross first. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So what's the antidote? (laughs) Because we're talking about pride and addictions And how do these things have strongholds on us? I've talked about walking freely. And that's literally the answer. Is grace. That's the antidote. Is to live freely in the goodness of God. In his mercy. In his richness. In his grace. That is the antidote. And And to receive grace, you have to say no to you. You have to have faith. You have to have faith that God is bigger than your addictions. Like say no to weed. Say no to the things that are holding you captive. Say no to smoking. Say no to certain behaviors and say yes to God. Grace is sustainable. Our addictions are not. They're temporary. Grace is sustainable. God is sustainable. And when we go... After these things, 
that don't meet our needs whatsoever. We're in this constant cycle and pattern of replacing God's goodness with something that is not good and something that's temporary. And how foolish will we be to not receive the true goodness and grace of God? Titus 2, 11 through 12, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Because of the grace of God, we are empowered to say no to the addictions that have been keeping us in chains through grace. Grace is is the thing that is going to split your chains in half. You want to get over your addictions? Walk freely. Walk freely in Christ just by saying yes to him. Just by saying, God, I don't want it my way anymore. I don't want to do things my own way. I feel sick. I feel tired. Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you, you may be able to endure it. There is escape. And you can escape your addictions and your pride and your pain and your suffering by walking freely in Christ. Sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to hit my mic. There's just a hair in front of my face. If you are tired, if you're just in a posture to where you're ready to just give God your addiction and give God the thing that you've been indulging in for too long and you know that isn't right and ready to give him the thing that he wants, I just encourage you to One, repent and say, God, I am so sorry that I thought that this was better than you because God is so good. He is so gentle. He is sustainable. He is rewarding. He is overly loving and compassionate and empathetic. And he's going to be gentle through this season with you. But if you're wanting to give your addictions away, I just pray that You just leave them at the altar. Because that's the thing that Jesus died for. There's no, there's no middleman anymore. It's just you and God. All those things that could have been stumbling blocks, he paid the price for. You can choose freedom today. And if that's you right now, and you're wanting to choose freedom, and you're wanting to choose the goodness of God. Just pray with me. I'm going to pray for you guys who just want to lay your addictions on the floor. And I'm going to guide you through it. So if that's you, please close your eyes with me. And if it's not you, please pray for the people who are going to lay their addictions down. So let's pray. Dear so Heavenly Father, I just pray that your children are now laying down their idols before you. That they are laying down their addictions before you. Lord God, we are asking for you to grant your grace upon us and for us to be in a posture to receive it. I pray, Father God, that every spiritual need that I have is met with your goodness and kindness. That all of my hurt and my trauma is in and struggles is met with your gentleness. God, I am laying my addictions at the altar, and I am sorry for thinking that this thing was going to ever serve me. You are the ultimate one who serves. I accept you as Jesus, my Lord and Savior, and I believe in your goodness, and I believe that you make radical changes, and that you are a good, extraordinary God. We love you, praise you, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. 
That's good. I felt like this podcast was low-key all over the place <laughs> because since this is kind of more a testimonial, I was just kind of like, let's just see where the Spirit of the Lord takes it. But I think it went well. And um, just know you guys aren't alone. This is a process I went through not that long ago. And it's not easy. It's hard. But I kid you not, giving it to the Lord is a is a game changer. And he is so good all the time. God is a great God. God is a great God. He's so good. He's so good. I think I'm good. That felt good. Yep. The announcements. If you gave your life to Jesus, if you need prayer, there's two links down below in my YouTube bio or in my Instagram bio. And then if you feel led to tithe, there's also a cash up link. Um, if you don't feel led to tithe, which is totally fine, you can always pray. I need a lot of prayer. What do I need to pray on right now? Um, just for a lot of wisdom, guidance, clarity, and uh, I, I know God's trying to expand me right now, and I don't know how he's going to do that. So just, just kind of like over that <laughs> um, and just like some other things that I've been facing as well. Whatever you guys felt led to pray about, it's fine. Uh, and yeah, I think that's that. That's all the announcements. I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Well, I love you guys. I will see you two weeks from now. Two Tuesdays from now. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And just hope that... Just praying for you guys that God is going to be so abundantly gentle and good to you guys. This week and forever always. I love you guys so, so much. And I shall see you next time. Bye, you guys.